Hey, good morning, gasaholics. I'm Hot Rod Bob, and you've got gas, the morning edition. While searching a story for today, I came across something that I really wasn't expecting to look for. I was looking for something else, but came across vehicle production statistics since, well, 1901. Actually, 1899. So, over 120 years worth of automotive production statistics. Now, most of us know Ford is one of the largest manufacturers in the world, but they weren't on the top 10 list until 1903. Matter of fact, they weren't on the list at all until then. And in 1903, it took 1,700 cars to get them into number three in third place position, which, wow, 1,700 cars. They produce more than that in an hour today. But that's what it took in 1903. Now, Ford's been on that list ever since. And in most cases, they are number one on that list. But the interesting part to me is the other cars that were in the top 10 during those years. And as it progressed through today. Now, one of the ones I found a little unusual was, well, Rambler. You remember them? AMC, the Rambler, well, it got on the list starting in 1903. Yeah, no, actually, 1902, they were number three with 1,500 cars. So you go back that far, you see a lot of interesting things. Oldsmobile was number, number one companies for 03, 04, and 05, and Ford started taking on the number one spot beginning in 1906 with 8,700 cars. Production figures show that in 1907, Ford had 14,000 cars. Their next closest rival was Buick, with 4,600 cars. What a difference that makes. 1907, Buick with 4,600, Ford with 14,000. Wow, big gap. Now, Buick stayed in the number two spot. Cadillac was there for a while. Buick came back in 1909, stayed there through 1910. And in 1911, Studebaker was number two. Ford had 69,000 cars built. That doubled what they did the previous year in 1911. 1910 was 32,000, 69,000 in 1911. These numbers are, are astounding to me because... Just the sheer number of cars they were able to produce. And remember, this was before the Model T. Before Ford started their production assembly lines, as they were noted for with the Model T. So these were early on. Willys Overland was number three. Buick had fallen to number four. All right, now these are 1910, 1912, 1913 numbers. Ford's been on top ever since. The beginning of 1908, or 1906, Ford went to the top of the heap in 1906. Rambler, Cadillac, and Oldsmobile beat Ford out in 1905, and Ford came back with 8,700 cars, and then nearly doubled production almost every year after that. And they've been on the number one spot since 1906. Now, they were knocked out of that spot by Chevrolet a few times, but in 1919... Ford produced 820,000 vehicles, nearly double what they did in 1918. Chevrolet had moved up to the number two spot with 129,000. 700,000 vehicles less than Ford. Now, you Ford guys are going, yeah, we got it, ha, ha, ha. Mm, not so fast, because Ford dropped out of that number one spot as Chevrolet started climbing. But as Ford produced cars. 1923, the Model T. 1.8 million Model Ts were built in 1923. Chevrolet was number two with 323,000 cars. Some of the car companies, like I said, that are kind of different that you wouldn't expect to hear in the top 10 and have gone away. They disappeared. Nash, 1921. They were, well, they were in the top 10. Studebaker, Studebaker stayed in the top 10 for quite a number of years. Hudson Essex. Willys Overland was number four in 1923. In 1925, sales dropped for Ford 
they went down to 1.6 million. 1.6 million Model Ts built in 1925. Chevrolet was still number two, but only 300,000 cars. Studebaker still in the top 10. Willys Overland was in the top 10 in 1928. Chevrolet took over the number one spot in 1927. Now, what was significant about the Chevrolet in 1927, I don't know. But I can tell you this. It was the switchover from the Model T to the Model A. And Ford stopped production. Don't know why, but he did. To make the changeover, Ford sold 367,000 Model A's in 19 or model t's in 1927 the last year of the model t chevrolet picked up that gap with one million cars that's right chevrolet in 1927 a million vehicles that doubled their production from the previous year 1926 was 500,000. hudson essex was number three buick pontiac willys chrysler and dodge after that in 1928, Chevrolet hung on. Ford still couldn't get things going. They were up to 300 or 600,000, 300,000 vehicles over what they did previously, but Chevrolet had just jumped up to 1.1 million. Now, you think about that for a second. In 1926, Chevrolet was at 500,000. They jumped up to over a million cars by 1927. Ford came back and in 1929, the Model A was a sales success. They went 100, a 1.5 million cars. Chevrolet still climbing, though, at 1.3 million. Hudson Essex was then third. By 1930, Ford was back in the lead for sure. Chevrolet had dropped significantly, only 600,000 cars. Chevrolet came back in 1931 as the recession started coming in, and Ford sales dropped to 615,000. Chevrolets went to 619,000. It was a drop for Chevrolet, but a bigger drop for Ford. Over 500,000 units dropped in that year. In 1932, Chevrolet stayed out there with the 313,000 units. Ford only at 210. And you got to remember, 32 was the introduction of the Ford V8, the, the car that and the model and the engine that was considered the epitome of hot rodding was one of the bad years for Ford. Only 200,000 vehicles. Chevrolet popped up to number one, stayed there through 33, and even though 33 Fords were more stylish, Chevrolet was out by over 150,000 vehicles. Sales were not up to the million mark that they had been, but the recession was really putting a stranglehold on people. Ford came back in 1934 by merely 10,000 vehicles over Chevrolet. Chevrolet was down 300,000, almost 300,000, in 35. In 36, Ford up ahead, but only 12,000 units. 37, they're still out in front. But now the big three have sorted out, and a lot of the smaller companies have fallen off the face of the earth. In 1937, Ford was number one, Chevrolet, followed by Plymouth, Dodge, and Plymouth outsold Dodge by 300,000 units. Where's the Plymouth today? Hmm. Pontiac was there, Buick, Oldsmobile, and Packard. So General Motors was pretty strong in the top 10 in the 1930s. In 1938, Chevrolet climbed back on top by 50,000 vehicles over Ford. Still not the numbers they were hitting before the recession. And in this case, Chevrolet at 465,000, Ford at 410,000. Plymouth still in the number three spot. In 39, Chevrolet was out by almost 100,000 units over Ford. Plymouth was still number three. Studebaker made it back into the top 10 with 85,000 units. In 1940, Chevrolet was leading by 200,000 units over the, Cher over the Ford. And in 1940, Ford had some dramatic, beautiful styling starting in 1939 and still couldn't catch the Chevrolet. Not sure why, but Chevrolet was out in front. In 1941, the last full production year before World War II, Chevrolet outsold Ford by almost 300,000 units. Chevrolet hit the million vehicle mark once again. Now, I'm not sure if it's because people saw the war coming and got the cars when they could, 
but Ford sales was up 100,000 units. Chevrolet was up 300,000 units. In 1942, this was a short year because in December, we all know that Pearl Harbor was bombed. Production of civilian vehicles ended for the 1942 model year, and Chevrolet held on to the lead over Ford with 254,000 vehicles. Now, you're going to remember the 1942 model cars started being released around September, October, and went out of production at the end of December. Ford was at 160,000 units, significantly lower than they'd been in decades. Buick was number four. Plymouth was number three. Pontiac, five. Dodge, Oldsmobile, Studebaker, Hudson, Chrysler, Packard, Nash, now we're getting some really big numbers here, or big companies. DeSoto, Mercury, Cadillac, and even Crosley was in this mix at 1,000 cars built in 1942. Now, 1946, when production resumed, Ford jumped up to number one again. With 400,000 units, Chevrolet second by, oh, just about 70,000 units short of Ford. Plymouth still in number three. Dodge moved back up to the number four spot. Buick was in five, Pontiac, then Oldsmobile, Nash, Hudson, Mercury, the Soto, Chrysler, Packard, Cadillac, Studebaker, and Crosley sold almost 5,000 units. They missed it by one. Hmm, Crosley, if you've never seen one, look it up. They are cool. Hi, Sid, how are you doing this morning? Danny Santos, good morning to you, too. All right, 1947, continuation of post-war production. Chevrolet dub, almost doubles their sales, goes up to 671,000. Ford stumbles, goes down to 429,000. I think people were starting to get tired of the stodgy Ford technology. Now, Ford had the V8 that Chevrolet didn't have, but they didn't have the ride quality. They didn't have the build quality. Chevrolet had just taken over that. Independent front suspension, smoother ride, a little bit more detail, a little bit more chrome. They started catching the eye of the buyer even more so than Ford was doing on post-production. Plymouth stayed in number three spot in 1947. In 1948, Chevrolet hung on, now over 200,000 units higher than Ford. Still not at the million vehicle mark that they were post World War II and, gosh, or pre-World War II and even before the Depression. So the, com the automotive companies did not totally come back yet. Mm -hmm. We'll see that a little bit later on. As a matter of fact, a year later. A year later, 1949, Ford introduces a revolutionary car. Henry II is now in charge, and he says, out with my grandpa's stuff, in with some new stuff. The whiz kids worked it. They got an independent front suspension. They got better body styling and 1 million cars again. 1.1 million for Ford. Chevrolet at 1 million. Buick, well, they're down in fourth. Plymouth staying in the number three spot. All three of those companies had totally new vehicles to introduce. Yes, Danny Santos, you made it. It's a happy Friday. In 1950, the new body styles continued on, and Chevrolet persevered. 200,000 units over Ford, 1.4 million. We're back to the million vehicles a year mark, and Chevrolet was there. Plymouth still holding on in the number three spot, up 100,000 units from the previous year, but still not near the million mark that Ford and Chevrolet are setting. They're at 600,000. Buick stayed in number third spot. Studebaker right in the middle of the pack with 300,000 units. And names that are gone today, Nash, DeSoto, Hudson, Packard, Kaiser, Crosley, and Frazier. All in the top vehicles of 1950. Crosley, little bitty car. People wanted them. 6,700 of them sold. 51, we're still carrying over the body styles from 1949 with some updates. Ford still has the V8 advantage over Chevrolet's six-cylinder, but that six-cylinder is reliable. Chevrolet holds on to the lead with 1.2 million Ford behind it at just a million. Plymouth still in number third, or the third spot. In 52, same thing, but they've dropped now. Sales have dropped 400,000 units for Chevrolet and for Ford. Chevy's still number one. Plymouth right behind him in the third spot. They nearly dropped 50% of their sales. 
going down to 300,000 units from 600,000 the previous year. In 1953, Chevrolet still holds on by a mere 100,000 vehicles. Plymouth back up to their 600,000 mark and is still in the number three spot. Studebaker still in the middle of the pack. In 1954, Ford introduces the overhead valve V8 engine for their product line and they jump to number one again, but only by 20,000 cars. Chevrolet still number two, Plymouth number three, but sales have dropped for Plymouth. They're down to just 463,000 vehicles. So 200,000 vehicle drop, but still holds in the number three spot. In 1955, things changed dramatically. Chevrolet finally catching up with Ford. They have their second production V8 engine. Now, for those of you who think the 265 was the first V8 engine, you got to go back to 1917. That's when Chevrolet introduced their first overhead valve V8 engine. But Willie Durant, head of Generous Motors at the time, didn't want Chevrolet to be a performance car, didn't want them competing with anyone other than Ford. So in 1917, Willie Durant kicked Chevrolet out, said, "Mm -mm, no V8, it's going to be a four-cylinder. Brothers weren't happy with that. The four-cylinder stayed until the stove bolt six-cylinder came a few years later, but Chevrolet never got a performance image, never got a V8 engine, until 1955. And in 1955, Chevrolet pulls out ahead again. 1.7 million vehicles in 1955. The Tri-5 Chevy starts to come alive, and Chevrolet pulls out into the lead by 300,000 units. Plymouth falters a little bit, although their numbers go up by nearly 300,000 units. Buick overtakes the number three spot, and Plymouth falls the number four. In 1956, the Chevrolet still holding on. 100,000 more than Ford did. The styling of the 56 Chevy far more appealing than the 55-56 Fords were. Now, 55-56 Fords aren't that bad. They're nice looking. They just didn't have what the manufacturers, well, what the consumers wanted, and the Chevrolet seemed to be more of what they were looking for. Although the Ford's still number two, Buick number three, and Plymouth number four. In 1957, the revolutionary low lean and long 57 Ford comes into play and Ford goes out into number one again by well nearly a hundred over a hundred thousand vehicles Ford goes up to 1.6 million vehicles the buyers are jumping at cars right now now the automotive market is really going up there this is U.S. numbers again no imports are listed in this this is U.S. manufacturers only Plymouth comes back up to the number three spot with 726,000 vehicles. Ford at 1.6, Chevy with 1.5 million. Buick still in number four spot. Still a very strong vehicle manufacturer. Why is it here today? This might be why. It had a good following. In 1958, though, Ford loses out again big time. Chevrolet jumps up into the number one spot with a revolutionary new 58 Mm -hmm. Chevrolet. Independence springs at all four wheels, coil springs, giving it a super smooth ride. The body style was more rounded, elongated, and it was cool looking. The 348 cubic inch V8 was introduced. Now Chevrolet has really got some performance to add to the line. Ford has jumped up to 312 cubic inches in 57. 58, they got the 352 introduced. The FE engines begin And Chevrolet comes up with a 348. Chevrolet out in front by over 100,000 vehicles. 1.1 million for Chevrolet, 987,000 for Ford. Plymouth still in the number three spot, but Plymouth not really growing, actually shrinking, going down to 443,000. Again, there was a recession in 1957-58. It didn't seem to hit Ford and Chevy bad, but everyone else behind it dropped significantly. Even Oldsmobile and Buick, Oldsmobile pulled up to the number four spot at 294,000, significantly lower than Chevrolet. Chevrolet, the premier model for General Motors and has been for decades and still remains that so. By 1959, Chevrolet and Ford are almost neck and neck. 1.4 
six million for Chevrolet, one point four five million for Ford, fifty nine new body styles, Fords more conventional, Chevrolet more radical with the wings, and Chevrolet held out. Plymouth still number three spot, but a million vehicles behind Ford at 450,000 vehicles. So you can see the, the fight between Ford and Chevrolet. The rivalry has been going on for decades, and it continues even today. In 1960, Chevrolet, 200,000 more than Ford. Plymouth still number three spot, a million vehicles behind Chevrolet. A million vehicles. Do you realize how many vehicles that, I mean, that gap is huge. It's tremendous. Plymouth still holding on to the number three spot. Rambler has moved up to the number four spot behind Plymouth, ahead of Buick. They're nowhere to be found, at least in the top five. Pontiac moves up right behind Rambler, but Rambler, that name's gone. The product is gone. But in 1960, their compact cars started catching on. Chevrolet introduced the Corvair. Ford introduced the Falcon. Mercury had the Comet. Rambler was there with their small Americans, and they started catching on. 1961, Ford takes over the lead again, but by a mere 20,000 vehicles. This was a hard fought battle for the number one spot. Rambler stays in the number three spot, Plymouth right behind. Actually, Rambler goes up to number three. Plymouth behind them in number four. Hmm, I wonder why. You ever take a look at a 1960 Plymouth? Take a look at it. All right, production figures for 1962. Generous Motors out in front again with Je Chevrolet. 600,000 cars more than Ford. Chevrolet at 2 million vehicles. They break in the 2 million mark. That's 700,000 more cars than they sold in 1961. Now, in 1962, the Chevy 2 came on as well. So you got two compacts, the Corvair, the Chevy 2, You've got a multi-level model of the full-size car, the Biscayne, the Bel Air, and the Impala. 62 was also a performance year for Chevrolet, with the 409s really coming to play. They were introduced in 61, but in 62, they really got noticed. And uh, the drag racers picked them up, too. And that was the good part. But number three was Pontiac in 1962. Big move for them. Plymouth drops all the way down to mid-pack. Oldsmobile Rambler is ahead at 442000 over Buick and Oldsmobile. Studebaker still in the top 10. 1963, Chevrolet out by a huge margin over Ford. 700,000 vehicles more now. Plymouth back up to the number four spot. Pontiac just ahead of it by 100,000 vehicles. So this is the through the 60s, anyway. In 1964, Chevrolet held on. 65, Chevrolet was out in front. But 1966, something happened, and Ford jumped out by 6,000 vehicles. It was close. But the battle continued on. And we've seen this battle going on for decades upon decades. If you'd like to find out more about vehicle production numbers and see who are the top 10 vehicles, well, you can go to Wikipedia. Automobile production figures. That's where I got my information. And it's interesting to see. And some of the cars, like, here, in 1967, Excalibur, 71 vehicles. Checker, 90, 950 vehicles. Shelby outsold Checker with 3,200 vehicles. Avante, 60 vehicles. So you can see some of the leads and changes and how things went. Ford and Chevrolet battling. One year Chevy's up in front. One year Ford's up in front. And this goes all the way through to today. So check it out. I'm Hot Rod Bob. You've got gas, the morning edition. A little bit of automotive trivia for you. Some production numbers. You can find them all at Wikipedia Production Automobile Production Figures. I'm Hot Rod Bob. You've got gas, the morning edition. Brought to you by Service Tech Equipment. Service Tech, when you've got that car, you got to be able to work on it. Get the right equipment from Service Tech. I'm Hot Rod Bob. You've got gas, the morning edition. Have a great weekend, everybody. Enjoy it. Take your car out. If nothing else, 
drive it, and enjoy it. I'm Hot Rod Bob. You've got gas, the morning edition. Have a great weekend.